we come through a society that deals with the erasure of women on multiple different levels. And one of those levels is, of course, where the family last name, the religion, um, the, I guess, ethnicity is taken through the patrilineal line. So it's taken to th through the father's line. And what happens with that is that there is this sort of silencing of the mother's role in that two-part dynamic. Hi, I'm Sarah Alagrubi. I'm an Emirati artist, designer, at one point in my life, a curator and an educator. Identities seem to have been the buzzword for the last uh, several years just because of the multicultural or multifaceted nature of the UAE. I think identity here is something that people often feel it is within their right and their privilege to gatekeep. Something that was discussed in Benedict Anderson's book, uh, Imagine Communities. When you come from a sort of nation state where it, uh, the population of the, the locals in the community are considered a minority within that group. They tend to regurgitate and re-emphasize certain, I guess, tropes or like surface level uh, markers of identity and they reinforce it over and over again in order to maintain and uh, in fear of like um, potential erasure of that ident identity. When it comes to identity, it is a double-edged sword. You know, it, it can both help and hinder the way in which you can progress socio-culturally, socio-economically, professionally. If you are not full, full from one uh, particular place, then you are a representation and a byproduct of that dilution. And because of that, you're going to be shamed for it and we will do whatever we can um, as a tribal insular culture to reinforce that ideology and that you don't forget it. It can be specific characteristics, attributes, conversations that you get these kind of like subtle jabs and subtle nods at the fact that, you know, you and I are not the same. And in this instant, I'm going to other you and your experience because I need to reinforce the dominance of, of lineage, of purity, of wholeness and you are not whole, you are but a mere half. Sometimes it's subtle, it's within the cracks of conversations, and sometimes it's so, um, it's so like in your face, it's really hard to avoid. In Emirati culture, I'm considered Emirati, but I am both equally as Emirati as I am Syrian. And I'm very proud of that, and I'm very proud of articulating that, but in certain uh, spaces, that type of, um, rhetoric is not really encouraged. We come through a society that deals with the erasure of women on multiple different levels. And one of those levels is, of course, where the family last name, the religion, um, the, I guess, ethnicity is taken through the patrilineal line. So it's taken to th through the father's line. And what happens with that is that there is this sort of silencing of the mother's role in that two-part dynamic. It's actually seen as um, an insult. And I think that um, that dilution just comes from the fact that, you know, as, as women, we are, are seen as a sort of the backbone of, of, of a patriarchal society. We're given the respect and the integrity when it's being offered to us, which is a reminder that it's not really in our hands. You know, we'll give you agency when we allow it. Um, and that comes from minimizing women's experiences, uh, diluting their very real truths. I think that women now, um, especially when it comes to identity, are really taking ownership and full um, entrenchment in their identity. When it comes to identity politics or ethnographic research, I mean, I started really diving into it about 10 years ago. With the research, it was very, very clear, with no shred of a doubt, that the discrimination and or discriminatory utterances in general were targeted towards women more than they were men, like without a shred of, uh, a, shred of a doubt. And that was mainly to make the women feel ostracized, to feel um, alienated, to feel shame. And that would be anything from 
the way that the woman would dress, the way that they would carry themselves, the naming and shaming of alluding to promiscuity, alluding to the shaming of the mother, um, alluding to the disgrace of diluting the blood, um, and any aspect of the stereotypes that you would normally see. So doing the research, I felt that it was a, a way to relieve and uh, unburden the, the women from those experiences because there was a way to prove that they did exist. I think the unburdening starts with opening up the conversation and the dialogue that is um, for women, uh, about women and also by women. And I think that that is where we can start to really see a shift in the way the narrative is being uh, you know, regurgitated over and over and over again. I think that a lot of the time that the silencing of women comes from the sheer fact that it is a, a normal way of conducting these types of conversations and we view the lens through either a patriarchal lens or the male gaze or whatever the case may be. And now if it is coming from the women, they are able to transmute the, the conversation and steer it in a direction that is going to help the way in which we understand the experience of womanhood, not hinder it. I think it's important for women also to unburden themselves from any internalized misogyny. A lot of the time women tend to combat women and confront women in a way because they have been conditioned to as a society. So at least for me, a lot of the discrimination that I had faced is from people that I know that have very similar experiences to me and they are women. And I think that when we start to rise above that and unite together and realize there is enough you know, room at the table for everybody to sit and it's not a competition, I think that that will alleviate a lot of the, the issues that have burdened women for so long against other women.